My name's Lisa Ganser, and this is my dog, oh. Dandelion, and we ch chalk sidewalks for social justice. Today we chalked the names of disabled loved ones who were lost to police violence. Some of these people died in custody, and some were in their own home, and they were in a mental health crisis, and someone in their family called for help. Instead of getting help, they got killed by police. I've been 5150, that's a police like slang ball. for folks who, um, who are in a mental health crisis, and the cops go and get them, and usually bring them to the hospital or bring them to jail. I've survived those, those situations, and so my work is kind of focused on people who didn't survive those situations. 70% of the people who are killed by police are disabled, and it's not talked about in the anti-police brutality movement. Derek Gaines, he's a black teenager that was killed in South San Francisco. He had a physical disability, he had a couple of disabilities. And actually the cop that killed him, I can't remember his name, but he is a cop still. Rosa Tukino was run over. She's an elder and she was just outside of the home where she lived and was walking and a cop backed up and ran her over in an SUV. And that particular woman cop has been in trouble more than once for reckless driving. I also write words of identities of people with disabilities, like bipolar, CP, trans, PTSD, neurodiverse, depressed, amputee, wheelchair users, disabled. I write the word disappeared because that's a thing too. People disappear, especially houseless folks. Like Carol Shaw um, in Detroit in 2009, 39 years old, black, deaf, killed by police. Um, John T. Williams also deaf and um, had mental illness, Native American, Seattle. He was an artist. I've met Yanira's brother, who's actually, his name's Tony, and he's the one who called the police for help the day that Yanira was in a mental health crisis and needed help. He wanted medical help. He was on the phone with 911 and told them she had taken her medication and was doing a lot better and was calmer. And a sheriff showed up and within a very short time shot her and killed her. She was 18 years old. Every time I chalk her name I use pink chalk because <laughs> Tony told me that pink's her favorite color. I've also connected online with family and friends of Robert Ethan Saylor. His disability is Down syndrome and he was, went to the movies with his caregiver. Ethan, that's what his family calls him, he was 26 years old. And in January 2013 when he was at that movie theater, he really wanted to just stay and watch that movie again. It was zero dark 30, like he wanted to watch the movie again. He was going to stay. And um, because of that, he ended up getting killed by police because he's disabled and because he wouldn't leave the theater. And I'm sending so much love to his family and friends. It's hard, it's hard. It's like, these are really tragic stories. I did not meet any of these people. Like, I've gotten to know a number of them after their death. That's a strange thing to become friends with someone after they die, or to become friends with someone who lost their loved one after they died. To be paying attention is important, and to be listening is important, and to be sharing stories is important. People cannot share their own stories after they're gone. Asa B. Sullivan, um, I'm friends with his mom, Kat Espinosa, and I went to his wrongful death trial. I sat in on a number of the days of that. They ruled it suicide by cop. He did not want to die that day. He did not want to die. I don't believe that. His mom doesn't believe that. His brother doesn't believe that. There should not be a thing called suicide by cop. That should not be a thing. A lot of the names that I chalked here today are people with disabilities who are black, who are indigenous. Kayla Moore was a, I say, super fat uh, black trans woman who lived in Berkeley. She spent some time houseless. She was schizophrenic. The police were called to help because she was in a mental health crisis in her own home and then the police tried to blame uh, obesity on her death when five police officers like piled on top of her. It's weird telling the stories like this. This is fucking tragic and horrific and obesity did not kill Kayla Moore, the Berkeley police did. <laughs> I assembled this list last night and I was looking at each person. There's a lot of fucking people and one person that dies is greatly missed and loved. Sometimes it's really dehumanizing, even as activists, talking about these people. They're people, but, but I wanna like bring love for that person. 
I feel like I'm drawing on the strengths and the humor of these like ancestors and some of them are really young, right? Jeremy's six years old, Rosa's 101, they're right next to each other. I feel like they're together somewhere, you know? And Derek Gaines, 15 years old. There's a handful of deaf folks here. I figure that, you know, like they're together. And we see people walking by and some people look at it, some people just keep walking. Some people stop and are really feeling it, take pictures. Only a mother knows what it's like to lose their child in this way. Only a brother knows what it's like to lose a sister to police violence. I didn't personally know any of these people, but I feel like as a community we can, we can collectively hold these experiences. Body cameras and CIT training are things that, that I see activists fighting for. And I will support those things. They're not solutions to me. They can like not release the footage, for one thing, that's what happens. They don't release the footage. Another thing is, is they'll say that their body camera malfunctioned. And so you asked me about uh, what is the answer? Well, I'm an abolitionist, so I don't think there should be police. <laughs> What's a solution? Doing anything I can do to be more accessible to more people as a human being. Seriously, slowing down, breathing, not honking my horn when I'm in traffic, taking the time to not wear scented things. Smashing ableism, anti-racist work, and all of that shit is like done at home. When I chalk here though, what happens is the power washers come out here. Within a day, this will be gone. But like I said, like we all do our little part and we aren't on the planet for very long. <laughs> so, these are disabled loved ones lost to police violence. Darnell Benson. Rosa Sakina, Derek Gaines, Tanisha Anderson, Sarah Lee Circlebear, Jeremy Mardis, Errol Shaw, Paul Castaway, Idris Steli, Matthew Hoffman, Errol Chang, Jeremy Jerry McDowell, Natasha McKenna, Philip Quinn, Michael Robinson, Kayla Moore, Robert Ethan Saylor, John T. Williams, Asa B. Sullivan, Roger Anthony, Cameron Boyd, and Yanira Serrano Garcia. I chucked the words loved one. That's for anyone who I didn't name here.